What's up everybody? Welcome back to Building Boulder. Today we're gonna cover four things. We're gonna show you the footers for the attractions, the foundations that are going under the attractions. We're gonna show you the electrical that's happening under the building. We're gonna show you the kitchen, which is on what's called a floating slab. And we're gonna show you the helical piers that are gonna hold the dome in place. Today's all about underground and foundations. Let's get started. show you are these footers that are built for the attractions and when I say attractions as you know we've got a tubing slide we've got ropes courses we've got adventure nets we've got rock structures all of these are held in place from a foundation perspective with these footers and the way that the footers work is they dig a hole you know call it four feet by four feet I forget what the exact dimensions are and they put this rebar cage in and then they fill it with concrete and anchor in with bolts a steel plate. And those bolts go deep into the ground and then they stick up a little bit so that when the attraction comes in with the steel, it's base plate sticks onto this base plate and they get screwed in place. So it's all bolted connections for these attractions held in place by these footers so it's got the right foundation under it because these attractions are gonna have a lot of awesome things happening above it. We gotta make sure we've got the right foundation in place, which are these footers. Here's what the hole looks like with the rebar in it. They dig that hole, they set the rebar cage, they're gonna fill that up with concrete. And what they gotta do, as you can see, a lot of these are filled with the rebar. They gotta put this base plate in place. And that's what the structures are gonna attach to are these anchor bolts. And so that was the first thing. Next thing I wanna show you, which visually is super interesting, is the electrical grid. And so here you can see, this is some of the electrical, it's the main electrical part of the building where you've got this huge line coming in from the street, and then it connects to our panels. And then from the panels, you can just see all the different, what's called conduit coming through, which is basically pipe and then they're gonna insert all the electrical wires through this pipe to run those in place when they need to. But look at the maze of electrical that's happening. And then what it does, as you can see here, it actually starts to go under the building. And this is how we get electrical from point A to point B under the building so that nobody obviously has tripping hazards and things like that. It's all running under the building to get it to the different locations that we need electrical. And it all starts here in the back with this little maze of what's called conduit going in the different directions and then heading into the building where we need it. So a lot of different electrical work. It's a huge part of the project. I just thought that was a really cool view to kind of show you what the grid looks like underground. You see all the different connections and then it just heads into the dome where it needs to go to get to the spot we need it. And so the third thing I want to show you today is our what's called kitchen building, which is outside of the main structure. It's on what's called a floating slab. So if you remember in one of the last videos, I showed you the piers that were going in. Well, these piers are used all around the kitchen foundation and they create this, what's called floating slab. And so you can see the wood is resting on this pier and that's happening on every pier, it's all resting. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna put what's called carton form down and they're gonna lay the slab so that all the concrete for the floor of the building, the slab, is resting on these piers. And the reason they do that is the soil under the building is very, is very unstable. It could move, it can shift. But by resting the floor, the concrete slab of the building on these piers, it's actually raised off the soil. So it's not gonna shift. That's why it's called floating. So the first time I heard floating slab, I didn't understand what it meant. But now that I can see it, makes perfect sense. They're actually getting it away from the soil, which could move, and they're just resting all of the concrete on those piers at the right increments where they need it so that the whole floor is level, staying input, and not subject to any movement of the soil. That's the floating slab of the kitchen building. All right, the last thing I wanna show you today is probably the most important. And so our building is an air-supported dome, which is a massive building with 75-foot tall ceilings, which is how we have all these awesome adventure attractions within it. But the building is held up with pressurized air. 
And so when they build the foundation for that, they put basically what's called a grade beam all around the outside perimeter of the building in a big, huge rectangle. And then what they do is they create concrete that's about two feet thick that's gonna, the dome is gonna attach to. Well, the way they hold that concrete in place is what's called helical piers. All right, so this is what a helical pier looks like before it gets screwed into the ground. So this one's kind of just laying around, but you can see it's got that basically screwing circle on a couple different ends. And they basically take that and they go straight into the ground and twist it, twist it, twist it until it reaches a certain kind of torque. And then therefore, once it's in there, it's really embedded into the ground, it can't pull out because the dome actually wants to pull things up. And then that's what it looks like once it's actually in the ground. I'm not sure how deep that's going, but I would guess, I don't even want to guess, but it's going deep into the ground, uh, way in there. And they just keep extending it as far as they need to. But that's what a helical looks like above ground. And that's what they look like once they're in place. You can see they're at an angle just so they provide the right level of resistance. And they just line up. You can see them go all the way down to create the great bream for the dome, the foundation. That's what it looks like. And so next, what they do with the dome, they have those helicals that I just showed you going into the ground. Then they got to form up this um, beam, if you will, that runs all the way down. And this is what the concrete's gonna be shaped around to form that beam going all around the, the air supported dome, which is basically a big rectangle. And you can see that running all the way down and it's gonna ultimately connect into these helicals to make sure it's all got the foundation that it needs. That dome is what's gonna allow us to have these awesome adventure attractions because the dome has 75 foot tall ceilings. And that was part of the vision for Boulder is if we can use this air supported dome to build big attractions within it, it's gonna give us the height and the clear space to create awesome ropes courses at three levels, zip lines. I take that back, our ropes course is at four levels four different levels high. We've got zip lines on those rope courses, tubing slides, the massive rock structures that you started to see some stuff about. It's all made possible because of the air supported dome. And so that's everything we wanted to show you today. Tons happening here at Boulder. We'll keep updating you on the progress. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, give it a thumbs up. We'll see you soon. Later.